What we're going to do today is go through the repair procedure of a ProBeam Junior plug connector uh, with the circumstance that you would have if a cable assembly was severed close to the connector but the connector itself was not damaged. Uh, now, there were two different types of connectors that, that are covered. We'll go through the more complex one, which is the plug, uh, and that is this connector right here. That's a ProBeam Junior plug connector terminated to mill tactical cable. The other one is a ProBeam Junior standard bulkhead assembly, also terminated to mill tactical cable. The construction of the bulkhead connector is a little bit simpler. It doesn't have a cable seal, doesn't have a uh, quite the complicated uh, crimp retention mechanism. So we're going to focus on the plug connector for today. So what we'll be doing is we'll be uh, reusing almost all the components of the plug connector and we'll start by disassembling it. So the instruction sheet for the plug connector is uh, document 408-10222 and this is available on the te.com website under the documents section. Now for the disassembly we would go to the back page. This is written as an assembly instruction so we're going to be doing disassembly. And if we look at the last page, uh, this last sequence of uh, diagrams has to do with how to install the protective cap. For purposes of this disassembly, we don't need to disassemble the protective cap from the connector component. So we're going to skip to the second last page. And we're going to begin by unthreading this rear section, um, which you see here in the diagram are wrench flats. And starting with a 17 millimeter wrench and beginning the disassembly. The first step is the protective cap will need to be disconnected from the front of the connector. Mount the connector into the bench mount fixture. And now with the 17 millimeter open end wrench, engage it into the wrench flax and unthread the rear component. In the instructions, this component is called an extension. The protective cap tether will remain attached to it and also the boot. When these components, threaded components are installed, uh, most of them are installed with Loctite thread locker, uh, so you will have to use a wrench at first and then you can hand unthread once you get past the thread locker. Next step is to uh, unthread the grip ring. Work it over the O-ring that's inside there and slide it back on the cable. And what you'll notice is that the O-ring, uh, there's a good likelihood that the O-ring is going to be stretched uh, beyond repair and is going to be uh, need to be replaced. Here you can see there's uh, excess stretch in that O-ring. We're going to disconnect the next component, which is the collet nut. That's a 15 millimeter open end wrench. Now the threads on this collet nut are greased in the assembly, so that should uh, unthread fairly easily. Next, using the same 15 millimeter wrench, we'll unthread the collet sleeve. This one is secured with thread locker. And you want to grip the cable with your other free hand to make sure that the cable doesn't twist while you're un unthreading the collet sleeve. If you don't hold the cable, there's a chance that it could spin the cable and twist off your buff fibers up inside the connector. Okay, next step, we'll disconnect the front housing from the bench mount fixture. Before you take the fibers out of the back of the insert, you'll want to make, make note of which buffer colors are in which cavity. The four cavities on the insert are marked as A1, B1, A2, and B2. Once you've disconnected the front housing from the bench mount fixture, install the insert tool. This engages with the front of the insert. You're gonna be using, on that, using that to push on the insert Remove it from the housing, it might take a little bit of a, a wiggle on the 
on the handle on the insert tool. Okay, now you can remove that from the insert. And next we'll be ready to remove the screw from the rear of the insert, which uh, loosens the ferrule plate, and that will allow the ferrules to be extracted. Now these ferrules would not be reusable because the cable and, uh, and this short length of fiber uh, was damaged and that's what we're going to be repairing. We're going to be re-terminating uh, a fresh length of fiber or fresh end with uh, new ferrules. So we just use the needle nose pliers to pull these ferrules out. Now one thing to keep in mind is we're going to be reusing as many components here as possible and we're going to be reusing the expanded beam insert, the ferrule plate which retains the ferrules in the insert, and the ferrule plate screw. The only components that will be replaced will be the four ferrules themselves. Uh, they come in a kit uh, with uh, fresh springs and uh, o-rings and the crimp components will also be replaced. So now we'll go ahead and remove the ferrule plate from the four individual buffers. And the remainder of the components further back on the cable will all be stripped off of this short length of cable. They'll get reinstalled on the end of the longer length of cable that's going to be reterminated. So you should have the extension with the boot and the tether attached, the grip ring, the collet sleeve, collet nut, washer, and wave spring. Okay, the first step in re-terminating the damaged end of the cable. If you don't have a clean end, you'll want to cut it so you have a nice clean end. This one already is uh, nice and clean, so we'll keep that as it is. In the first step, we're going to be putting the components onto the cable that we took off. First one is the extension with the boot and the protective cap tether. Push that through. If you have any difficulty, you can put a little bit of grease on the, on the end of the cable jacket. Makes the boot and the internal cable seal, seal easier to slide on. Uh, the cable seal in this case remained in the extension. That's already in there. The next is the washer. And then we need the collet nut, the collet sleeve, and the wave spring. And the grip ring. Make sure to put the grip ring on with the threads facing towards the cut end of the cable. And the orientation of all those components is shown in the instruction sheet. Okay. And if you have a clamp to put on the cable, uh, it'll help to keep the components back out of your way. Now on the instruction sheet on page three, we have a diagram in figure three that shows the starting strip lengths. We have a length for stripping the outer cable jacket and then a length to cut the Kevlar strength member to. Uh, we'll start by marking the outer jacket on the steel rule. And we'll go for the shorter end of the tolerance that's given. The tolerance is 65 plus or minus five millimeters. We're gonna mark it at 60. And the reason for this is the shorter length gives you a, less, uh, a lesser length of buffer that needs to be stripped off of the fibers. To strip the jacket, we're going to use a, uh, an electrical type of uh, insulation stripping tool.
And depending on the cable you have, it might be easier to take it off in uh, shorter lengths, work your way back on the cable to get to your 60 millimeter mark. Okay, and next you're going to want to mark your Kevlar to the 11 millimeter nominal that's called out in figure three. Okay, now with your Kevlar marked, you're going to be installing the crimp components. Put on the crimp support with the flange back towards the cable. There's this internal stop. It will only go on until you hit the end of the cable jacket. And now you're going to be cutting the Kevlar at the marks that were put on just a short bit ago. Now you fan out the Kevlar. Okay, we've got a little excess length, trim that off. And now we're, we're going to put on the crimp sleeve, fanning out the Kevlar. And with the Kevlar folded backwards over the knurled section of the crimp support, you should see a nice, uh, nice neat distribution of the Kevlar around the circumference. Now, if you didn't quite get a good distribution of the Kevlar or you have a yarn or two that's sticking out, just pull the crimp sleeve forward uh, redistribute your Kevlar, slide it back on, and now we have a nice neat distribution with no stray yarns. Okay, the next step we're going to be mark marking the buffered fibers, and on page four <clears throat> of the instruction sheet in figure five, detail C, we have the tolerance given of 55 plus one millimeter, and that is reference to the back of the crimp assembly. So we'll be laying it out on a steel rule and we'll be laying our crimp assembly on zero and we'll be marking it for 55 millimeters. And we want to be sure to mark all four fibers because the objective is to get the fiber length equal on all four. We don't want any excess buckle in any one fiber. Now, if you follow the instruction sheets through step by step in the sequence that they're written, you'll notice that it, it uh, talks about crimping the crimp components first, and then you get down to where you're stripping the buffered fiber, marking it and stripping it. We're going to do a little variation on that. Manufacturing has found that it's better to leave the crimp components uncrimped until after the ferrules have already been terminated. That helps to save you from uh, losing your crimp components just in case you break a fiber when you're doing the buffer stripping. So we're going to leave the crimp assembly uncrimped and we're going to be stripping the, the buffers uh, first. Okay, with the crimp component, the back end of it lined up with the zero marking, uh, we've got a mark already established on the buffers at 55 millimeters. We want to make sure that all, five, all four fibers are marked evenly. The objective is to have all four of the terminated ferrules the exact same distance from the back of the crimp assembly. Okay, now we'll be using the buffer strip tool, stripping the buffers off of each of the four fibers.
use alcohol to clean the fibers. You want to make sure there are no contaminants on there so that we get good adhesion of the epoxy. Okay, the ferrules come individu individually packaged. You want to remove the ferrule and there's a spring. It may be loose in the package. Make sure you get that out as well. And we're going to be injecting epoxy. Recommended epoxy is Epotec 353 ND or NDT. You load the epoxy in just as you would in an ST connector. Uh, inject the epoxy until you see a very small bead at the tip and a little bit more in the back to secure the buffer. And then you extract the syringe needle. Okay, we've jumped ahead. The ferrules have already been terminated. Uh, the epoxy's been cured. Uh, the fiber's been cleaved and they've been polished. It's, it's the same basic procedure that you would use for uh, an ST connector. Uh, so there's nothing unique about that. So now we're getting ready to do the crimp assembly. And we start by pulling the crimp sleeve forward and pull it off of the Kevlar. And we're going to be pulling the crimp support forward slightly. We don't want the Kevlar to slide back through the crimp support. We're just doing that so that we can expose some of the jacket that will slide up inside the crimp support. We'll put a band of the uh, 380 Loctite epoxy around the cable jacket. And then we slide the crimp support back until it bottoms. Next, we're gonna be putting the Loctite around the knurling. We're gonna put a band around the entire circumference uh, in the middle section, maybe slightly biased towards the front. And we wanna put enough on here so that it wets into the Kevlar. The objective is to make sure that all the Kevlar gets captured and bonded together into a single unit. That's what gives this termination such high tensile strength. Slide the crimp sleeve back onto the Kevlar and it should fold back nice and neatly. And now we're ready to crimp. The crimper that we use here in manufacturing at TE is a pneumatic powered crimper. Uh, the crimp itself, it's an 8.6 millimeter hex. Uh, you can get the crimp die along with the hand tool from TE and you'll get the same, same end result. Now holding the springs forward with your uh, index and middle finger to make sure they don't slide back onto the Loctite. We're gonna put Loctite on the Kevlar where it's exposed and fold it back on the front of the crimp assembly. And the objective is to bond this into a single unit. And if you have the, uh, the activator, 712 activator, that will help to set up the Loctite quickly. And I will put an additional amount of Loctite at the back where the cable jacket enters the crimp support. The Loctite back here is to give the cable its twist strength, resistance against twisting. And now the fiber termination is complete. Now we're getting ready to put the ferrules into the insert. We want to make sure that the ferrule end face is absolutely clean, not just the end face, but the sides of the ferrules also. And it's, it's just like any PC connection where you have to make sure that the fiber end face is clean before you made it so that you don't damage the fiber. This is the same thing. When it goes into the insert, the fiber end face is going to be in direct physical contact with the back side of the lens. So make absolutely sure that your ferrule is clean. Now using the, uh, the notations that you took earlier of which fiber color went into which cavity, uh, install your ferrules using that same format. 
If you forgot to write that down or you lost it, you can always backlight the fibers. Uh, A1 on one end of the fiber goes into B1 on the other. Uh, B1 goes into A1. Similarly, A2 into B2, B2 into A2. Now we're just getting the ferrules started. We're not pushing them in uh, beyond the O-ring. And you really should be able to do that by hand also if you want to. Now we're going to use the, the tool that presses on the spring and that seats the ferrule. It makes sure that the pressure is applied to the spring which forces the O-ring forward and to make sure that the O-ring doesn't try to roll back. Once you have all four of those seated with the ferrule tool, go back and double check them if necessary. Okay, now we're ready for the socket head cap screw. And once you find it, <laughs> put it through the center hole in the ferrule plate, and then use your hex wrench. And we're going to secure the ferrule plate, and as you tighten down the socket head cap screw, the ferrule plate compresses the springs on the four ferrules. Now we've jumped ahead a little bit on the instruction sheet, but what we've just completed is putting the ferrule in, putting the ferrule plate on the back. So where we're going to be picking up now is detail C in figure 12 on page 8. And uh, we'll put the insert assembly tool on the front of the insert. Let's get that on there. And now we're going to uh, prepare the front housing. When we disassembled it earlier, we noticed that the O-ring on the back of the housing was uh, stretched and slightly damaged. So we're going to be taking that one off, putting a new one on. And the front housing has to be lubricated both on the front seal and the O-ring on the back. So we're going to apply some lubricant. And particularly on the O-rings, it's important to make sure you get lubrication around the entire circumference. If you have a dry spot anywhere, the O-ring is going to uh, grab when you, when you assemble the next component on it, and it's going to try to roll it forward or potentially damage it. Okay, that looks good on the O-ring. Now some lubricant on the front seal. And this lubricant helps to prevent the seal from trying to push out the front when you insert the insert. Okay, next we have to lubricate the O-ring on the insert itself. And again, make sure you get it lubricated around the entire circumference. and engage the hex wrench in the screw in the back of the insert. We're going to install into the front housing. The insert and the housing are keyed, so there's only one orientation that it'll go in. Now you can see that the insert is uh, essentially flush with the mechanical reference plane in the housing. And we're ready to install it back into the bench mount fixture. Remove the cable clamp. Slide your wave spring forward over the crimp assembly and into the back of the housing. Next, your collet sleeve. And Threads of the collet sleeve will get blue Loctite applied, a thread locker.
and holding the cable with one hand, thread the collet sleeve in. You're holding the cable to make sure it doesn't twist. If the cable were to twist, you could potentially break the fibers. That's why it's so important to have a bench mount fixture, otherwise you would need to have three hands. And with your collet sleeve threaded in by hand, uh, now you're ready to tighten it. Uh, we're gonna use a, a torque wrench. And if you go to uh, page nine in the instruction sheet, uh, you'll see the uh, torque for that particular component is four to five Newton meters. We'll go ahead and tighten that. There we're at five. Okay, now we apply a little bit of grease to the ramps on the collet sleeve. This is to make sure that the collet nut, when it's tightened down, doesn't bind. Slide your collet nut forward, thread it on by hand. And now we're going to be tightening that to a torque of 3.6 to 4 Newton meters. And that torque value again is called out in the instruction sheet. Okay, and there we are at 4. Now the fiber termination is completely secured into a, into a sub-assembly module. It's, uh, it's protected now from damage. And we're gonna go ahead and slide the rest of the components forward. First starting with the grip ring. Okay, that's secured to the fixture. Next we're gonna be sliding the extension forward. Oh, and before we bring it all the way up, uh, there's a cable seal, which you can't see, but it's still inside the extension. You need to put some grease on the cable jacket right behind the washer. The washer is already slipped forward here. And we do this to make sure that the cable seal doesn't try to twist the cable. Oh, we also want to put some grease inside the front lip of the extension. Uh, the O-ring that we put on the front of the, on the rear end of the front housing, uh, this will help to make sure that that slides in without binding or rolling. Now we're ready. Slide that in until it stops and then your, your threads are ready to start engaging. Thread that in by hand. And it'll take quite a few turns, maybe 10 turns or so. And now we're ready to torque that. And that will get torqued to a value of six to 10 Newton meters. and there's six. All right, and with that, we can unmount it from the bench fixture. And your connector is ready for service. Normal maintenance on the ProBeam series connectors uh, is that you may need to clean the lenses periodically. And in this case, where we just assembled it, you may have excess grease that pushes forward when the insert passes through the front seal. We'll just use a lint-free swab and some alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. You could also use acetone.
The nice thing about this interface is you don't need a microscope to do the cleaning. You just do it with, uh, with the naked eye, similar to how you would clean the glasses that you wear on your face. Thank you.